Scott there, Peabody way back, and Loser here. The, uh, Loser is Sherman. Tell them how you got the black eye, Sherman. I ran into a door. Oh, come now, Sherman. It's true. Eddie door. He lives across the street. It seems you could profit by some pugilistic instruction. Huh? Boxing lessons. Oh. With that in mind, we shall set the way back controls for London, England in the year 1867. Who are we going to visit? The gentleman responsible for the rules governing modern fisticuffs, the Marquis of Queensbury. Although we've used the way back extensively in the past, it hadn't lost any of its punch. For there we were inside Foote's Athletic Club. Standing in the center of a boxing ring stood the Marquis of Queensbury himself and what appeared to be two pugilistic contenders. You've heard my rules, gentlemen. See that you abide by them. Ready, set, proceed. With that, the two combatants dashed pell-mell at each other, only to engage in a most graceful exhibition of the minuet. They're not fighting, Mr. Peabody. Keen observation, Chairman. The exhibition lasted two hours, and when it was over, we quickly cornered the Marquis. I should like to devise rules for boxing, but I've never been in a fight in all my life. We can fix that, Mr. Queensberry. Sherman grabbed a bucket of water and handed it to the Marquis. You see that fellow standing in line over there? Pour this bucket over his head. Willing as they come, the Marquis went over and followed Sherman's instructions to the letter. Boy, who did that? I did. Why do you ask? Here it comes, Mr. Peabody. He'll get it for sure. But instead of hitting him, the fellow shook hands. Oh, thank you, mate. I've been standing in this ruddy line all day waiting to take me shower. Now I've had it, and I can go see my daisy. That having failed, Chairman suggested we adjourn to the Epsom Downs racetrack. Their horses are rounding the far turn and heading for the last jump. Oh, Joe, this should be a smashing finish. Here, Mr. Queensberry, take this detour sign and put it in the middle of the track. Hurry! Queensberry had just placed the sign as Sherman had instructed when the horses thundered up to it, read it, made a sharp turn to the right, and ran off directly into the clubhouse. Who is responsible for that ruddy detour sign? He is! I guess you're going to give him what's coming to him now, huh? I certainly am. Here, sir, is a reward of 5,000 pounds. It seemed as though a hold-up had been in progress inside the clubhouse when the horses galloping through had put a timely stop to it. The Marquis was a hero and Sherman was a failure. Again. Gee, I thought that would work for sure, Mr. Peabody. What do we do now? We will let me take over. Noticing it was exactly four o'clock, I called to a passing waiter. Your pleasure, sir. A cup of tea for me, a cup of tea for the boy, and the Marquis of Queensbury would like a cup of coffee. <laughs> This, of course, was against all English tradition, and the waiter found it impossible to control himself. Call for your tea time, eh? I'll teach you, you blinking traitor! So far, so good for part one of my plan, and wasting no time, I quickly put part two to work. Stepping between them, cease, cease, I should like to call it to your attention. This is hardly the place for such activity. Right, oh, then, I'll meet you in the gym at five o'clock. Gracious. Now I see what you mean by a set of rules for boxing. Chap could get injured this way. You better dash home, Mr. Queensberry. Write some rules and then get to the gym. The Marquis heartily agreed. Unfortunately, one hour later, he still hadn't arrived with the rules. But Marquis is a ruddy chicken. No, he isn't. Here he comes now. Oh, I'm sorry to hold things up, but I had to pick up this suit of armor. I seized the rules for boxing he had written, and sure enough, rule one stipulated the combatants could wear any raiment they wished. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to use the same bloomin' backlight. Mr. Peabody, they'll kill each other. Quick, Sherman, I need a dictionary and a penknife. The knife Sherman had, the dictionary was found in a nearby locker. What are you gonna do, Mr. Peabody? Whittle. What else? While the Marquis and the waiter squared off to do battle, I whittled the dictionary down into a page and a half. Now, here you are, Marquis. Here are your rules for boxing. Must wear gloves, must be rounds of three minutes duration. Capital, sir, capital. You did it, Mr. Peabody, you did it. Don't I always? We watched in satisfaction as the Marquis and the waiter settled their differences in a gentlemanly fashion. That waiter's got a neat left hook. Yes, but this will be his last fight, you see. He'll eventually go into the exercise business and become famous in his own right. Famous, Mr. Peabody? Why, yes. His name is James Lawrence Nasium. I never heard of him. You never heard of... Jim Nasium? <laughs> What do they call a cat who drinks lemonade? Oh, 
They call him a sourpuss. <laughs> <laughs>